we got the whole thing out. Didn't even drill all the way through it, so we're out. Our threads are preserved, and it's like it never happened. to the channel so in this video we're gonna be heat wrapping my downpipe for one reinstalling that on the car and then messing around with the alternator a little bit later on probably tomorrow or, or the next day gotta get that thing straightened out and maybe cut the timing cover I also have been thinking about changing the timing belt because I think it's a little bit worn out due to being too tight so we'll cover all that later but getting right down to it we got our bucket right here um, and I got our heat wrap is soaking in this bucket of hot water So that's the best way to get it nice and malleable so that you can wrap it nice and tight and I've got Stainless steel zip ties right here, which are good for uh, keeping everything Secured so we'll probably just have one or two of those on there And uh, so I got that and I have a little bit more and I can use a little bit of extra if I really need to this is a decent amount of pipe here, this three inch, so we'll see. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down and hopefully we can wrap this pipe and cover up my ugly welds. guys and there it sits the downpipe is completely wrapped came out pretty good I did have to use three separate sections but I ended up only using one um, stainless tie hopefully it all stays together it should because I wrapped over those areas my only concern is it may be tight like right in here I know there's a spot that was pretty close hopefully it's not too close uh, maybe I'll do a little I might clearance the motor a little bit rather than uh, mess with this um, cause it's just like a, a stud, uh, like an area where a bolt goes in. I could just take, take a small amount off there and just be fine. Um, and then also down here by the pan, but I think we should be okay there. So yeah, hopefully this all fits on and isn't too tight anywhere. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I don't have to remake the uh, turbo drain. I think it should fit around it still. It might be touching it, but shouldn't be too, too bad. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty stoked. I think it came out pretty good. So I'm gonna let this uh, dry and then it'll get nice and firm and then we'll try to install this thing. So it's the following day and this thing is all dried off and I went ahead and hit this flange with a little bit of sandpaper just to clean it up uh, and a little block just to make it flat. It's not, uh, not gonna be super flat, but I do have a gasket for this, stainless gasket, so we should be good. I didn't have one on it previously and I think that might have created uh, an exhaust leak before the O2 sensor in there and that could potentially be an issue so I have a gasket for it I'm gonna use it this time um, yeah the heat wrap looks pretty good hope that it fits I haven't checked yet uh, but right now I'm worried about something totally different uh, I did paint this bracket that's for the exhaust uh, for the downpipe so that one bolts to the motor so that's all painted up so that it won't rust and now my main concern is I want to change these exhaust manifold studs right here and all of these have to be taken out and I don't have an extraction tool I could probably have one by tomorrow so I'll do that probably tomorrow um, but there is one that I did break off down here and it's I think it's about flush with the block so that's kind of unfortunate um, so I'm going to pull the whole turbo manifold setup off. I'm going to leave everything together as it sits because there's a gasket in here and I don't believe that it's leaking. So I'll leave that and I'm going to leave the uh, wastegate on there too. So I'll just take the whole setup here right off and then I want to try to pull all these studs 
and change them out with these new studs that I got. So I'll show you guys the new studs and I'll show you my process or method for doing it. And I got a new gasket, a new exhaust manifold gasket that's not like the rubber kind because um, that it's not rubber but that like rubbery style one with the you know uh, pressed stainless gasket on the outside it's not that good uh, the better ones are like this so this is a nice gasket here so I'm really hoping that this thing seals good because I can see that this one was leaking a little bit um, I can see like a little bit of soot in the corners and stuff like that so I know that it is leaking ever so slightly so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing off we'll be able to see if it was leaking a lot easier once the manifolds off so I'm gonna do that I already have everything disconnected and ready to go so we're gonna get started doing that alright so the turbo has been removed and upon taking it off I kinda got an idea um, I'll talk to you guys about that in a minute maybe, but uh, yeah, you can get a good look at this motor mount from here. Now that the turbo is off, this thing was naturally aspirated, you'd definitely be able to see it way easier. In person you can see it, it's just hard to get the right camera angle to show you guys what it looks like. But yeah, that is the motor mount, so that came out really sweet, and it definitely holds the motor really solid. So looking at this, you can see... Um, down here in the corner it looks like it's all sort of charred so I think we might have been leaking a little bit here especially let me take this gasket off here and so yeah you can see it looks like maybe a little bit was getting by there and a little bit in the corner there yeah definitely some in the corner where I lost the uh, actual stud so that makes sense um, yeah, so I think if we get this thing to seal better, we can definitely put a little bit more power and a little bit quicker spool time into that turbo. Also, yeah, back of the gasket, you can see it was leaking a little bit on the motor side too. Really a crappy gasket. This should be much better. It should clamp down, and uh, these guys right here should be uh, the sealing factor instead of like just this whatever this material is it, uh, it's not it's these aren't the highest quality gaskets here that's for sure so that one right there is super deep guys like I don't know how I'm gonna get that out that's kind of a bummer um, I don't know. I, I was going to try to weld a nut onto it, but it's so far back that welding a nut onto it is going to be kind of tough. I'm going to have to like build it up and hope that it doesn't like mess with the aluminum around here. Um, I don't know. Maybe just hit it with a tack and then let it cool, hit it with a tack again. Build it up until I can get it to a nut and then hopefully it doesn't crack off, but it might crack. Although it didn't take too much force, I just got this one loose right here with vice grips. So I might try to do the rest of them with vice grips. Um, I was thinking about moving this bracket to give myself better access. I might do a little bit of research. I want to figure out the best way to take this guy out. Um, you know, maybe there's like a tool for it, and I'll, I might just wait and order that. Because I don't really want to mess up the block, or mess up the head, rather, just because I'm trying to, uh, you know, fix this stud here, which I need to fix it, but... I don't know, this head's kind of shot anyway, but I don't want to buy another head. Also, it looks like it was leaking a lot of exhaust up top here. Like, this is all sooty on the head. So, I think this thing was leaking a ton of exhaust out of the center. These two were kind of loose too, these center bolts were loose. I was afraid to try to crank anymore after this one snapped on me, but they would loosen from time to time, and uh, these guys were loose, so I think we were leaking a little bit here. but. Yeah, we're gonna get the, the head all cleaned up again, you know, less uh, exhaust on it, and then we'll be good to go with this new gasket. So I'm gonna check this guy, I'm gonna open it up and throw it on the uh, manifold and see exactly if we need to port anything. And if we do, I'll try my best to port the manifold. I'll show you guys that process. Alright 
guys. So got all the rest of them out except for this one. This one's going to be a pain. You can see how far below the surface it is. I did manage to find a uh, an easy out and also a couple of drill bits. So I think that we may be able to get this thing to come out. We are just going to have to be super careful. So what I did was I took a punch and I ground it down so that it's a nice fine point. And what I'm going to do is center that, making sure that it's centered because you want to drill the center of this. And so we're going to put it in the exact center of this stud. And then we're going to smack it with a hammer. That should leave a nice ding in it. And then we're going to drill through all the way through, hopefully, um, or at least most of the way through. And then we should be ready to size it up and then we'll bang the extractor in lightly and crank this thing out. So we're gonna start by, go ahead and tapping it in here. So I'm just gonna make sure I have enough room to swing here. Make sure it's centered. Luckily these studs were not super tight, so I didn't really have much trouble here. The Easy Out is doing a really awesome job. And I did drill the nice center of the bolt there, so we didn't really have any issues. And you guys will see in a sec here, we got the whole thing out. Didn't even drill all the way through it, so we're out. Our threads are preserved, and it's like it never happened. So that's how you extract. Uh, that's Best case scenario, everything went well. Even though we had, uh, it was super recessed below the surface of the block, everything came out good. So I'm happy about that. We can go ahead and thread in all of our new studs now and we should be good to go. It's about 9 o'clock and I plan on stopping around 10 and I kind of want to see where I can get. So we got everything all done over there in the front, but now I kind of want to work on the side. As you can see my timing belt, it looks kind of worn out, the number, you know, the letters are all worn off as well as uh, I can start to see the, the ribs through it and I think that it's starting to wear out prematurely either because of the tension on it or I think it's just because I bought a cheap belt. Um, I did buy a cheap junker belt, so I kind of bought a better belt, hopefully, and I want to change it. And I have to take the cover off anyway because my belt for the alternator down there is going to rub on the cover. So I need to take the cover off to trim the cover because I don't want to burn out the brand new belt. Um, so anyway, I got to take the crank pulley off. I got to take the cover off, and if I got that all off, might as well take off 
power steering and the bracket and the motor mount and then I can do the timing belt as well which I have in the mail or coming in the mail anyway so yeah I'm just gonna try to yank some stuff off of this thing and see how far I can get tonight I would like to at least just get the cover off and get everything out of the way and get the get it ready to look at the timing belt so that involves crank pulley and all that stuff so we'll see what I can get off and uh, yeah we'll see uh, how far we can get all right guys, so it's been eh, half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, half hour was working, 45, uh, you know, total 15 minutes of just me staring at it. But uh, yeah, I got everything all exposed here, timing belt, cover, took that side motor mount off, um, alternators off, uh, brackets, all sorts of things, power steering to the side, just everything needed to come off there. Um, yeah, crank pulley, you know that big pile of parts right there basically so yeah we are ready to do a timing belt when that comes in shouldn't be too difficult I've done it uh, a couple of times on this car so just uh, swap a new one on I want to make sure the tension is perfect like I want it um, and yeah I'm pretty happy with everything so far it's turning out really good I think this car is gonna go back together really well this time um, you know, I've taken this car apart a few times, so this time I really know what I'm doing, so it's gonna go back together nice and quick and uh should be should be good. I'm hoping we make some more power with all these mods here. So, sorry if this video is all over the place, but it spans multiple days and I'm trying to, you know, like look for things to do because I don't really have much going on right now. Um, as it sits right now, I got the downpipe bolted, uh, the wastegate dump is fully finished, uh, welded up and everything, all painted, ready to go on. Um, so it's mainly ready to go back together. I'm just waiting on getting the timing belt and the new balance shaft belt as well. I'm going to put that on and then throw everything else, everything else back on, tighten down everything, and this thing is ready to start up at least. Um, but yeah, it should be ready to go very shortly. Timing belt's supposed to arrive tomorrow, but in the meantime, I'm trying to like find stuff to do here and there, but I keep adding stuff on. Um, motor mount over here, I ordered some window weld to fill it in, but as of right now, um, Obviously filling this in is going to make this a lot stiffer, but this whole thing up top here kind of annoys me So I was always wondering What the heck it was and maybe some of you guys are too uh, So I'm gonna cut this thing open because I really want to know a what's in it and B if I can get the heck rid of it because I don't want it. I know it's for dampening purpose, but I want it out. So we're getting rid of it I'm sawzawing right through this thing So I'll show you guys what ends up being inside of here and if you guys Decide you want to do that too or not. Maybe I'm just crazy, but I don't like the way it looks. I want to get rid of it. So this thing's going to get all filled in with window weld. Once that gets here, 3M window weld. Maybe I'll make a separate video on that, but that should be pretty cool too. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this open. And I think I might end the video off with cutting this open because I'm not really getting much done in this video. Alright, so I actually did not know that this was a fluid filled mount. 
You can see we got a little bit of fluid down in that bucket. That was interesting to find out. Probably wouldn't have cut it open if I knew that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, live and learn. Um, yeah, probably don't cut yours open. Um, so the fluid up here is not major, it's just for dampening purposes. But it looks like we got like this thing that I cut in half, and this is like some kind of like little agitator or plunger. Because when this lower section of the mount moves, it moves the top. You probably, yeah, you can probably see it. When I move the bottom, it moves that, which would move this, which would move in this top chamber here. And uh, that's got some give to it too. So they're all kind of like plungers. You can see that there's still some fluid up in that guy um, rolling around in there. But there was a bunch of fluid that was in this chamber. That's what started leaking out. So I drained that. And uh, there's still a bunch more in here. But we won't really be needing this, I guess, um, and all the other chambers. So what I'm going to do is ditch this. Uh, I might just fill this with window weld like I do the rest of it, just to stiffen it up more. Cause you know, we do have a little bit more articulation here, so I'll probably clean this up, fill it with window weld, and I'll fill down here with window weld all the way through. And this should become a nice, uh, relatively solid mount and uh, take up a little less space in the engine bay too without that bulky thing up there. I care a little bit less about vibration since this thing is not a daily. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that clip of what is inside of this motor mount. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, hopefully you found it interesting. I definitely learned a lot from the experience. You guys probably shouldn't try that. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. And uh, remember to subscribe to see more videos on this car right here. It's coming up soon. Um, timing belt's coming in and then this car should be running and we should be able to start it. Let you guys hear the exhaust, take it for a rip. I want to tune it again. Like I said, do some tuning videos uh, with the Honda Tuning Suite which is a new software, should be able to get some nasty flames. That software is supposed to be really awesome for spitting flames. So super pumped about that. But yeah, stay tuned. Past the thousand subs, guys. We're cruising, we're like we're soaring. It's awesome. I'm pumped and uh, you know, we're finally making some progress. So thanks for everything and keep liking the videos. Keep subscribing, guys. Appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.